السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين نبينا ورسولنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ثم أما بعد وله عن عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله تعالى عنه قال حبس المشركون رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن العصر حتى احمرت الشمس أو اصفرت فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم شغلونا عن الصلاة الوسطى صلاة العصر ملأ الله أجوافهم وقبورهم نارا أو حشى الله أجوافهم وقبورهم نارا <تصفيق> So continuing in our weekly sessions, our weekly uh, sittings, in which we read from Umdatul Ahkam of Al Hafiz Abdul Ghani Al Maqdisi Rahimahullahu Tabaraka wa Ta'ala on the topic of Fiqh al Hadith. So we are in still in Kitab al Salah in Babu al Mawaqeet, the chapter of the timings of the prayer, Al Mawaqeet. So the author now he brings the hadith of Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa ardah al-hudhali The great sahabi of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam <coughs> So he says walahu and he has also narrated from him Who is he talking, who is this dhamir, this pronoun referring to walahu If we go back to the previous hadith then uh, the author has said وَفِي لَفْظٍ لِمُسْلِمْ وَفِي لَفْظٍ لِمُسْلِمْ So this Dhamir refers back to Sahih Muslim. So likewise we find in Sahih Muslim, the same incident which we discussed last week, which was the Ghazwa of Ahzab, the Ghazwa, the Battle of Al-Khandaq, the Trench, which was, as we discussed took place in the fifth year of Hijrah, where the Kuffar of Quraysh, the other neighboring Arab tribes, the Munafiqun, the hypocrites and the Yahud, the Jews of Medina, they conspired with each other to, to launch an attack upon the city of Medina, upon the city of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. So in that same incident, regarding that same incident where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he missed and him and all of the Sahaba, they missed Salatul Asr because of the intensity of the battle, how severe the battle was, how shadid the battle was of the battle of Khandaq, of Ahzab, that they missed Salatul Asr and said the Prophet ﷺ prayed Salatul Asr after the sun had set, meaning after the time of Asr had finished. Likewise in Sahih Muslim, Walahu, Walahu, and likewise in Sahih Muslim in the, regarding the same incident, An Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu from the the in mouth of Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala and he said that حبس المشركون رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن العصر that the, the uh, idol worshippers, the polytheists, the mushrikun they held back the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم from Salat al-Asr from the prayer of al-Asr حتى حمرت الشمس أو اصفرت up until the point where the sun had either become reddish in colour or it had become yellowish in its colour so this is a حتى حمرت الشمس أو اصفرت either it became this or it became that this is a shak min al-rawi this is doubt from one of the ruwat one of the narrators of the hadith in Sahih Muslim which goes, us, goes to show for us the integrity of the ruwat of hadith how how uh, honest and how integri how how much integrity they had in themselves rahimahumullah tabarak wa ta'ala which if they had any shak in regards to what the wording of the hadith was then they said it was either this or it was either that hatta ahmarat ash-shams aw asfarat so this is the time of the day when the sun is close to setting close to maghrib time hatta ahmarat ash-shams aw asfarat it either became red or it either became yellowish so the sun in the various stages it has, when it's right in the middle of the sky, it is like whitish in colour. It is very clear, very, uh, you know, bayda, naqiyya. It's very, very uh, clean in its colour. As it goes more toward the western hemisphere, it goes toward the western side of the horizon, then it changes its colour. Slowly, slowly it yellows, and then from yellow it goes to, it goes to red. So this also is a dalil which Al Hafiz Abdul Ghani Al Maqdisi Rahmahullah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is bringing to our attention in regards to the timing of Salat Al Asr. As we mentioned previously, that the Ahnaf, Hanafiya, they pray Salat Al Asr extremely late. When the sun is closer, 
to setting the knot. And this goes to show that the Prophet who prays Salat al-Asr, before the sun even turns yellow, uh, even before it turns yellow, uh, so leave aside turning red. So the sun would be bayda naqiyah, as we mentioned in previous hadith, that a person could go ila aqsal madina to the furthest end of Medina was Shamsu Hayya and the sun was still alive, bright and burning and hot meaning that the Prophet ﷺ, he prayed Salat al-Asr at an earlier time than the Ahnaf they pray so this was the condition uh, during the battle of Khandaq and Ahzab that the battle was so intense Salat al-Asr became extremely late and in those ahadith we took last week the sun had already set and at that time the Prophet he prayed Salat al-Asr حَتَّى حَمَرَّتِ الشَّمْسُ أَوْ اسْفَرَّتْ فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ شَغَلُونَا عَنِ الصَّلَاةِ الْوُسْطَى صَلَاةِ الْعَصْرِ so then the Prophet he said that they have diverted us away from the middle prayer Salatul Asr. Mala Allahu ajwafahum wa quburahum nara. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill their bellies, fill their stomachs, and fill their graves with fire. Oh hash Allahu ajwafahum wa quburahum nara. Oh may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stuff their bellies and stuff their graves with fire as they have diverted us away from Salatul Asr, from the middle prayer. And there is no uh, conflict between this hadith and the hadith which came previously because if we ponder and if we think and we reflect the hadith which came previously says that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he prayed Salat al-Asr after the sun had set after the sun had set and this hadith here which we have today of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhi said حَتَّى حَمَرَّتِ الشَّمْسُ أَوْ إِسْفَرَّتْ up until the time when the sun had became red or become yellow so the, when the sun becomes red and yellow this is before sunset this is قَبْلَ غُرُوبِ الشَّمْسِ before the setting of the sun and there is no contradiction between them why because we mentioned that the ghazwa of Khandaq ghazwa of Ahzab it lasted for around about a month 25 days taqreeb and around about a little shy than one month so it could have been in another day that one day the Prophet ﷺ, he was, they were, the Sahaba Ali Muridwan were diverted and uh, away from Salat al Asr because of the intensity of the battle. So they prayed Salat al Asr before sunset. And another day they prayed Salat al Asr because of the intensity of the battle uh, after sunset. So there is no uh, mu'arada between them. So what Imam Maqdisi is trying to bring to our attention is the qadiyah, uh, the mas'ala of qada, of making up a prayer. Whereas if a person was diverted away from the prayer, they, were, they had any legitimate excuse to pray a prayer after its timing, then that is fine. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that man nasi, man nas, uh, whoever is that man nasiya an salati aw saha anha fawaktuha hina yadhkuruha that whoever is that is diverted away from their prayer or forgets about it then its timing is when they remember that prayer so if a person is for example sleeping man nama an salatin sorry man nama an salatin aw saha anha whoever sleeps on a prayer so if a person is sleeping for example and the timing of Salat al-Dhuhr, if you take Salat al-Dhuhr as an example, the timing of Salat al-Dhuhr as you mentioned before is from the zawal of the sun, إِذَا زَالَتِ shams, When the sun diverts away from its meridian, from the zawal, from the middle of the sky, أَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِدُلُوكِ الشَّمْسِ As Allah mentions in, Salatul, in, in Surah Al-Isra, أَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِدُلُوكِ الشَّمْسِ perform, perform the prayer from the Duluk of the Shams, eh? from the Zawal of the Shams, from when the sun little bit diverts away from the meridian, from, from the uh, zenith, then that is the point of Salat al Dhuhr. Up until Hatta Yasiru Dillu Rajuli Katulihi, up until the point where a person, his shadow is equal to his length. That is the ending time now of Salat al Dhuhr. So if a person is sleeping, for example, they had extreme tiredness and they completely forget about Salat al Dhuhr, they fell asleep. And they wake up and Asr time is in the middle of Asr time, toward the end of Asr time. Then because they woke up, they have a legitimate excuse. An Udhr which is legitimate, an actual excuse because they were sleeping. Then they pray Salat al-Dhuhr in that time when they remember, when they wake up. Um, and they do not delay that prayer. Even though the timing of Salat al-Dhuhr has finished, but because they had an excuse, then they make qada of that prayer when they remember, when they find time, when they are able to. Otherwise, uh, which the ulama of the ahnaf, which they have, they have a specific term, qada umuri, al qada al umuri, where a person, if they, for example, they did not pray for ten years, and then Allah grants them hidayah, and then according to the ulama of the ahnaf, all those salawat for ten years, they have to make up those salawat. 
This, for this, we find no, no evidence from Kitab and Sunnah. This is the only time where you make Qadha of a prayer is when you have a legitimate excuse for it. Upon that person who has missed their prayers for 10, 15, 20 years and then Allah gives them Hidayah, on such a person is only to make Tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sincere Tawbah, sincere repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to pray a Kathra and a multitude of Nawafil prayers. A multitude of Nawafil prayers. Uh, Wallahu alam bis sawab. We go on to the next hadith on Abdullah ibn Abbas. رضي الله تعالى عنهما قال أعتم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بالعشاء فخرج عمر فقال الصلاة يا رسول الله رقد النساء والصبيان فخرج ورأسه يقطر يقول لولا أن أشق على أمتي أو على الناس لأمرتهم بهذه الصلاة هذه الساعة So this hadith is narrated by Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas رضي الله تعالى عنهما The cousin of our Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم who for whom our Prophet ﷺ made specific dua. Allahumma faqihu fi al-deen wa allimhu al-ta'weel. Oh Allah, faqihu fi al-deen. Grant him understanding, comprehension, or fiqh of the religion, and grant him uh, interpretation of dreams. Uh, wa allimhu al-ta'weel. A great sahabi of our Prophet ﷺ, who is known to everybody. He says that, A'atama al-Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bil-isha. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one day, he did this act of a'tama with the salat of al-isha. A'tama, what is this meaning of a'tama? We know, we discussed previously that the Prophet وسلم, he forbade the Sahaba from calling salat al-isha as al-atama. Al-atama, even though some of the Bedouins of the Arabs, they used to call salat al-isha as al-atama. Why? Because a'tama means that the person, he delayed. He delayed salat al-isha this one time up until one third of the night had passed up until one third so if you take the timing of the night time up until one third had gone then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prayed salat al-isha in this time that's what the mean what's the meaning of a'tama he delayed up until one third had passed فَخَرَجَ عُمَرُ so sayyidina umar ibn al-khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he came out and he said to the prophet sallallahu alaihi the prayer of messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam raqad an-nisa wa as-sibyan the Prophet you have delayed this prayer Salat al-Isha up until a point where the women and the children they have fell asleep they have fallen asleep because you have delayed Salat al-Isha to such an extent up until one third of the night had passed which goes to show that a noam al-khafif light sleep it does not break a person's wudu la yanqud al-wudu a noam al-khafif light sleep what is light sleep light sleep is for example when a person they fell, fall asleep while they are not leaning on anything, while they are sat up and they are not leaning on anything. Because if a person is leaning on something and they fall asleep, then this is what is called as a deep sleep. This is noam thaqil. Whereas if a person is not leaning on anything, they are just leaning forward, for example. They are just leaning forward and they fall asleep, they doze off. Even if they snore, if they move a little bit, they will wake up. That is what is meant by a noam al-khafif, light sleep. As Sayyidina Anas radiallahu ta'ala an, he says that the, the Sahaba would wait between Salat al-Maghrib up until Salat al-Isha حَتَّى تَخْفِقَ رُؤُوسُهُمْ ثُمَّ يُصَلُّونَ وَلَا يَتَوَضَّعُونَ Up until the point where their heads would doze off, their heads would fall, their heads would lower in their sleep حَتَّى تَخْفِقَ رُؤُوسُهُمْ Their heads would lower as they are sleeping ثُمَّ يُصَلُّونَ وَلَا يَتَوَضَّعُونَ Then they would pray Salat al-Isha and they would not make wudu from that which goes to that noam, noam sleep, which is a light sleep, it does not break a person's wudu. So here Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala and he said to the Prophet the O Master of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa the prayer, the women and the children have fallen asleep in the masjid, they have fallen asleep. فَخَرَجَ وَرَأْسُهُ يَقْطُرْ So then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came out to lead them in Salat al-Isha, وَرَأْسُهُ يَقْطُرْ and his head was dripping, his head was dripping with water. What does this mean? His head was dripping with water. It means that he, the Prophet ﷺ, what delayed him, what possibly delayed him from leading them in Salat al-Isha, it was the fact that he had to perform ghusl. He had to perform ghusl. Hence why his head was uh, dripping with water. Otherwise, if a person makes wudu, when they make wudu, they only make masah over their head. They don't wash their head. So when a person makes masah, they wipe over their hair, they wipe over their head, then a person's head is not dripping with water. It's just a, li a little bit of water that is on a person's head. So what, it shows that the person was making ghusl here, wa ra'su yaqtur, which also is a proof and an evidence that is not mandatory upon a person, upon a male, upon a man, to cover their head while they are 
in front while they are stood in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, while they are stood in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is not mandatory upon them to cover their head. Otherwise, why would the Sahaba say, وَرَأْسُ يَقْتُرْ While his head was dripping with water, صَلْوَاتُ اللَّهِ وَسَلَامُهُ عَلَيْهِ So then he came out and this was his condition, meaning that what, what kept him behind it was the fact he had to perform a ghusl sallallahu which also goes to show that he was a human being, alayhi salatu wasalam. He was not as some people, they uh, imagine he was sallallahu alayhi that he was, you know, like, a, a, he was a, a superhuman. He never had a shadow sallallahu alayhi or some khurafat like this. No, he was a human being. قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ Say to them, O Mahayyub sallallahu alayhi wa that I am a human being just like you. You know, he had to answer the call of nature sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He had relations with his wives sallallahu wa sallam wa alayhi wa radiyallahu ta'ala an hunna. But what was the distinction? Yuha ilayya. What makes me different to other human beings? Revelation comes to me. I am chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am khayr al-bashar. I am Sayyidu waladi Adam. I am the best of all of the children of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. I am the chieftain of all human beings. He was Sayyidu waladi Adam sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Wa rasu yaqtur yaqul, law la an ashukka ala ummati. And then he said, were it not for the fact that I find hardship for my ummah, or ala al-nas, or upon the people, la amartum bihaadihi I would have commanded them with this prayer, meaning Salat al Isha, at this time. I would have commanded them with Salat al Isha at this time, were not for the fact I find hardship upon my Ummah. Lawla an ashukka ala ummati. So, what, is, what do we learn from this hadith? We learn that the timing of Salat al Isha, as we discussed previously, that Salat al Isha, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had no set timing for Salat al Isha. He had no ahyanan wa ahyanan. Sometimes he would delay Salat al Isha, sometimes he would hasten Salat al Isha. If he saw them, that they came together in the masjid, he would pray Salat al Isha. If he saw that they had not all yet gathered, he would delay Salat al Isha. But what we learn from this is that for Salat al Isha, it is preferred to delay Salat al-Isha a little bit. Whereas the foundational rule, as we, get, as we studied right in the beginning of this chapter, in Babul Muwaqeet, is that أَحَبُّ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى The most beloved deed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is الصَّلَاةُ فِي أَوَّلِ وَقْتِهَا Is the prayer in its beginning timing. As soon as the prayer starts for a person to pray their prayer, that is, أفضل الأعمال that is أحب الأعمال that is the most virtuous of deeds that is the best of all deeds that is the most beloved deed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the timing of Salat the preferred timing of Salat al-Isha it is when one third of the night has passed as the person he said here that this is the correct timing of Salat al-Isha when uh, Al-Atama has come in one third of the night has passed however what was the illa? what was the reasoning that the Prophet he did not command his Ummah to pray Salat al-Isha at this timing لَوْلَا أَنْ أَشُقَّ عَلَىٰ أُمَّتِي Were it not for the fact that I find hardship and difficulty upon my Ummah Which goes to show his, the nature of our Prophet وسلم, that really he was وَإِنَّكَ لَا عَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ He was upon the best moral standing sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes him that a message has come to you Azizun alayhi ma'anittum That it is grievous upon him your suffering Harisun alaykum He is concerned over you Bil mu'minina ra'ufur rahim He is upon the, by the believers he is merciful and kind So it goes to show for the, the principle that Al-mashakka tajlibu al-taysir Al-mashakka tajlibu al-taysir This is an extremely important qaida Fiqhiyya Extremely important universal principle that all of us we need to understand that Al-mashakka that difficulty dictates and brings about ease. Hence why the Prophet said that Lawla and Ashukka ala ummati. If it were not for the fact that I find difficulty and hardship for my ummah, I would have commanded them with the prayer Salat al Isha at this time. But he did not. He did not command his ummah with that sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam because of the hardship that his ummah would find. Salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. And especially for us, this is a great qaida for us in this time, in the summer time when summer is coming in the west. Whereas in the eastern countries, in the Islamic countries, Muslim countries, we do not find this problem of uh, the extremes in the summer and the winter. When in summer time, the days are extremely long. And in winter time, the days are extremely short. 
This is because of the location in which we live, the extremely the northern hemisphere of the world we live in, close to the uh, uh, close to the uh, top half of the northern northern half of the hemisphere. Whereas in the Islamic countries, we do not find this phenomenon. In the Islamic countries, the Muslim countries, then more or less most of the year, the timings of the salawat are around about the same timing. Yeah, you have a little bit of differing, maybe half an hour, a little bit maximum half an hour more or less. The timings will differ throughout the year, but not to the extent we find in this country, in the UK, where Salat al-Isha can be, for example, in the winter time, Salat al-Isha would be extremely early. The timing of Salat, when Salat al-Isha enters into, uh, its time comes in, maybe around 6 o'clock, تقريباً, 6 p.m. And in the summer time, Salat al-Isha would be extreme 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. The timing will come in. So Alhamdulillah, we have this principle that al-mashaqqa tajlibu taysir that when we find difficult and hardship this brings about ease this brings about ease hence why in these days we pray salat al-isha five minutes after the adhan five minutes after the timing has entered for salat al-isha otherwise if we delay salat al-isha later until a third of the night will be extremely late and people they will not be able to handle this hence why لَوْلَا نَشُقَّ عَلَى أُمَّ We're not for the fact I find hardship and difficulty for my ummah I would have commanded them with this prayer at this time but he did not command his ummah with that sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because of the difficulty his ummah uh, would find so building upon this المشقة تجلب التيسير for example if a person is in some circumstance and they find it difficult to pray they will find it difficult to pray Salat al-Asr on the correct timing, for example. Then upon them is to make jam'a bayna salatain. Upon them is to join between the true prayers, between Dhuhr and between Asr, if they will find difficulty and hardship. Because that is the whole point of this qaida, al-mashaqqa tajlibu taysir. And we say there is no problem in that. There is no problem in that. If a person joins in, in safar, and in marad, or even in hadar, as in the hadith of Sayyidina, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhum that the person jama'a bayna al-dhuhri wal-asr bayna al-maghribi wal-isha min ghayri khawfin wala safar min ghayri khawfin wala matar meaning in time of uh, residency when he was resident in Medina the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he joined between dhuhr and asr and between maghrib and isha without any fear without any rain without any traveling and when he was asked why did he do that he said لِأَلَّا يُحْرِجَ أُمَّتَهُ in order that he may not impose any difficulty upon his upon his ummah so these are two ayahs we'll cover trade the hayat of sayyidina abdullah ibn mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu which shows for us the mas'ala of qada of making up a prayer and the hayat of sayyidina abdullah ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma from which we get this qaida lawla al-mashaqqa tajlibu at-taysir that difficulty necessitates and dictates brings about a hardship yuridu allahu bikum al-yusra وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends for you, wants for you ease and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not intend for you hardship وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not made for you in your deen, in your religion any sort of hardship, any sort of, of, of difficulty and Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and Sayyid Bukhari she said that مَا خُيِّرَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ بَيْنَ أَمْرَيْنِ إِلَّا اخْتَارَ أَيْسَرَهُمَا مَا لَمْ يَكُنْ إِثْمَا The person who was never presented with any two choices except he chose the easier among them مَا لَمْ يَكُنْ إِثْمَا As long as it was not sinful, if there was any sin involved then of course the person would be the furthest away from any sort of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if it involved any form of breaking of the sharia of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the hudud the limit set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then of course we would be the furthest people away from that but otherwise al-mashaqqa tajribu taysir difficulty entails and dictates necessitates and brings about uh, hardship uh, brings about ease sorry naktafi بهذا هذا ما عندي والله تعالى أعلى وأعلم بالصواب علمه أتم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته